Welcome to the video, Transforming the Power of Self-Deprecation, Techniques to Make Constructionism Available. My name is Dr. Stephen Bacon. I'm a clinical psychologist in Santa Barbara, California, and I've spent the past decade writing books and researching exactly how psychotherapy works. The realization. At this point, your exposure to constructionist ideas should have resulted in an open and fluid sense of lightness and freedom. The ongoing comparison is to the exorcists who have discovered that the spirits are constructs. The Western psychological equivalent is the concept that all of my problems, inadequacies, deficiencies, and flaws are also constructs. Negative feelings created and maintained by the Apollonian need for stability in individual identity and cultural continuity. Of course, this does not imply that your life is completely free and without limits. We all have our genetic propensities with resulting strengths and weaknesses. We all are suspended in our culture with certain advantages and disadvantages. And we all have a physical history of injuries and traumas that might limit our bodies. In spite of these fundamental realities, we have the clear advantage of the awareness we have the opportunity to claim a level of psychological freedom through constructionist insights. Actualizing. The last video recommended discernment and dissociation, the ability to tell the real from the programmed, and the related ability to witness the activities of the unconscious without identifying with them. When one is centered in those two principles, there is an opportunity to begin with a sense of optimism and freedom, and then extend that freedom by reprogramming the parts of the unconscious that are problematic or difficult. The obstacle and its resolution. While some self-actualizers are immediately ready to begin reprogramming the unconscious, a number of other personal growth seekers find themselves still inhibited by feelings of self-deprecation. This video is focused on how to work to minimize that self-deprecation so that one can continue to move forward with personal growth. The simplest way forward in terms of minimizing this self-deprecation is, ironically, through the employment of basic techniques with inherent power. Put it in another way, certain approaches are well suited to give one a bump in self-esteem. As a result of this bump, all the benefits of the constructionist approach become available and one feels relatively more free and prepared to move into the next stage of reprogramming the unconscious. Techniques with inherent power. By definition, techniques with inherent power function primarily in fundamental reality. A simple example is exercise. When one meaningfully increases their level of exercise and fitness, there is a corresponding increase in self-esteem. The good news is that this enhancement is pretty much guaranteed. The bad news is that it can be difficult to predict how much improvement comes from exercise. Moreover, using exercise in this manner requires both willpower and some free time, both of which may be in short supply. It's important to emphasize, however, that exercise and the other techniques with inherent power described in this video only need to be pursued intensively for the time needed to increase self-esteem to the point where one can begin to program the unconscious. The nature of the bind. Here's the nature of the bind. The unconscious is so full of negative self-esteem that it essentially blocks one's ability to feel the freedom of the constructionist principles. For example, ideally one can stand in the constructionist principles of discernment and dissociation and reprogram trauma relatively easily. However, for certain individuals, shame and guilt have become so pervasive that although they have no problem understanding the principles of constructionist freedom, they are relatively incapable of feeling the resulting sense of empowerment and choice. These individuals need a positive bump from the techniques in this video to move forward. Without such a bump, they continue to fall into the sense that how they have lived and marked them as unforgivable, permanently flawed, different from normies. This sensation is so debilitating that it needs to be significantly moderated before moving forward. 
Effective techniques. Fortunately, there are many positive techniques with inherent power to choose from that generate the needed positive impact. They are mostly well known to practitioners of personal growth. We have already mentioned exercise and increased level of personal fitness. Other techniques in that same category include weight loss, eating better, and consultation with health providers that result in decreased pain and disease or increased energy and vitality. Reductions in substance use are sometimes essential and often helpful. Motivation issues. All of these require motivation and time, requirements that are linked to the idea that these are techniques with inherent power that operate by changing our relationship with fundamental reality. In spite of this sometimes onerous requirement, these techniques are the quickest and most reliable way to get a self-esteem bump, especially for those who feel that their unconscious attitudes are resoundingly negative. Put another way, these are techniques that move on forward, even in the face of a negative attitude. They are hard work, but they don't require finesse, symbolic acts, or positive beliefs. Just do them and you will get a bump. The bump isn't intended to heal the unconscious. It simply allows one to be in the state where they have full access to the contractionist perspective on freedom and fluidity, qualities that do allow for a more complete healing of the unconscious. Types of interventions. These practices can be divided into two basic categories, physical and social. The physical can be understood using the metaphor of meditation. When meditators are trying to calm their mind and find it difficult to to quiet, they shift to a more gross level. First, they try to calm the mind by breathing regularly. If that fails to calm the mind, they switch to the physical and try to calm the body by relaxation, yoga postures, or even aerobic exercise if things are truly agitated. We can use this same model to pick the physical interventions needed to get a bump in self-esteem. Psychology has listed literally dozens of interventions that calm and support the mind. If we are grossly agitated, start by removing poisons. For example, decrease substance abuse or radically poor diet. If we are moderately agitated, focus on things like strength training, fitness, and losing weight. If we are less agitated, Practice in the area of yoga postures, tai chi, or breathing exercises. There are dozens of specific approaches that exemplify each level of intervention. It's more important to pick the one that appeals the most, as motivation is more important than the mild differences in effectiveness between approaches. What to look for. Remember that you are simply attempting to achieve a sufficient bump in self-esteem that allows you to feel that you can practice a constructionist approach to reprogramming the unconscious. Start with the most gross level of intervention that you feel you need, and then move to more subtle levels. Continue the progression until you feel a sufficient bump. Social interventions. The most famous social intervention, and arguably the most important, is what is often called uptime. This consists of increasing one's social interactions, whether it initially feels good or right or not. More specifically, this means forced participation in anything social. Ideally, rewarding interactions with positive people are best, but even seemingly mediocre interactions with less desirable people are still helpful. Essentially, one is looking to replace downtime computer games, watching TV, surfing the net, etc., with anything that has a a social component. Typically, when one is depressed or full of self-loathing, these kinds of social activities take effort, as the natural tendency is to socially isolate. One must resist the tendency to isolate and force socialization. Kindness. The next most important social intervention is typically called kindness. As we will see in a subsequent video, kindness has the potential of being much more important to personal growth than is normally thought, but as an intervention that allows one to access the benefits of constructionism, kindness is a relatively simple practice. It requires one to do a series of small benign interactions with others. 
Examples might be favors or friends, acquaintances, or strangers, or handing out small sums of money to the destitute, or even smiling at strangers. Anything that feels like a kindness can be practiced. Don't get too elaborate. It's more important to generate multiple small interactions than a few larger ones. As common sense and research tells us, doing random acts of kindness regularly is one of those practices that seem to benefit others, whereas in actuality, the primary beneficiary is the giver and the actor. Other actions. Frankly, there are literally hundreds of other actions that function as a bump and work to make the constructionist edge accessible. Meditation and spiritual practices come to mind. Making amends and asking for forgiveness can be crucial. Simply keeping a consciousness-oriented journal can be very useful. The list goes on and on. What is vital is that these practices bump us out of a negative fixation on self-deprecation. The bump occurs in spite of the tendency of the mind to hold on to shame. Ideally, as one practices any of these approaches, one gradually feels the consciousness shift from self-obsessed to witnessing improvement. Ideally, there will be some level of disidentification. As one witness the darkness begin to lift, one recognizes that neither the initial shame and self-deprecation is me, and neither is the relatively improved affect me. Consciousness. Being in such a funk that constructionism is unavailable is paradoxically not the worst thing. The solutions offered here, which are admittedly simple and easy to conceptualize and practice, illustrate just how easy it can be to change consciousness. This is one of the primary concepts of constructionism. Personal growth is relatively easy and straightforward once one strips away the complexities used by the Apollonians to maximize stability. Returning to the metaphor of the exorcist, the secret to growth isn't to master how to discern which spirit or which complex exorcism to use. The secret is to know that there are no spirits and that all the exorcisms are simple rituals. That's why simple practices like exercise, weight loss, uptime, and kindness are sufficient to give enough of a positive bump that the freedom of constructionism is once again available. What if I still feel trapped? Just as the constructionist revelations are insufficient for some, these simple practices can also be insufficient. This suggests that you need to get a bump from another particular person before constructionism becomes available. While the easiest access to another is to seek help from a therapist, coach, or healer, one should also explore the idea that there is someone close to you that you must resolve something with before you are available for personal growth. If this is true, consider approaching that person in the spirit of amends, forgiveness, or whatever attitude you believe is necessary. The Therapist As was described in some detail in the nine video series on how therapists can use constructionism to be more effective, the central idea is that the charisma of the therapist combines with her own commitment to grow and heal and moves us in the desired direction. In that sense, therapists should be chosen for their charisma and not for their experience, school of thought, or gender. Even a commitment to constructionism is less important than charisma since one should remember that constructionism is simply one path for cultivating therapeutic charisma. Jay Haley's advice. Jay Haley, one of the most outstanding psychotherapists of the last 50 years, has a great quotation about how to pick a therapist. Speaking of Milton Erickson, he said, I think he got more confronting as he got older. And I think that makes people feel that he was a more confronting therapist than he really was in our day. I think perhaps he confronted more when he had fewer skills of physical control. Because we really remember him as very accepting and joining sort of a therapist. And I think a lot of people don't think of him in that way. I certainly remember him in the early days as someone who was accepting. Also at the same time, as someone you could readily be fearful of because it was easy to see he was powerful and penetrating, even while being accepting. You could shake a little about it as a client. 
That shaking is a measure of the therapist's charisma. Of course, charisma doesn't have to take the form of shaking, but whether it is extra acceptance or intuition or perceptiveness, it will always have an element of awesomeness. Real power. Remember that you're looking for another to lift you up past your limits of self-deprecation. Don't be hung up on their form. Concentrate instead on whether they have the energy, charisma to lift you with their belief in life and in you. If you don't feel something special about them in the first few meetings, replace them with someone else. Since therapy techniques lack inherent power, it's all about whether the therapist has the requisite charisma and whether that charisma is available to you in the relationship. Bump up techniques are common sense. Essentially, the purpose of this video is to respond to clients who are unable to let the power and freedom of constructionism release them from neurotic and human concerns. One of the secrets of life is that as long as we are bound up in self-deprecation, we are limited and unable to address the bigger life questions. This video has recommended a variety of techniques that can give one a meaningful bump up so that the person can fully participate in the opportunities presented by constructionism. These techniques are not unique to constructionism. Indeed, the bump techniques have been taken from a variety of common sense approaches. Self-deprecation as a paper tiger. The most significant part of this video is not the techniques. Rather, it is the fact that so many people can change so quickly with a relatively brief intervention. I am the prisoner of my moods. Seeing and knowing how quickly these simple tools can change self-deprecation is another way to practice constructionism. Put another way, ease of change almost always points towards the idea that a seemingly difficult obstacle is in truth a constructed paper tiger. This insight that the seemingly solid moves easily with basic interventions is arguably the most important insight offered by this video. Negative self-image is also a construct that can dissolve easily like mist in the morning sun. 